Yo, 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 it's your friend Dinner Dog, and today we're going to start our journey. The um, Knowing how this bad boy works is really pivotal to understanding like what you're about to get in yourself into. So in today's video, we're going to explore a number of different things, including well, what the scope of the randomizer is, so what really look at it's aiming to achieve, and then we'll break down what's randomized and what's not randomized. In these videos, you're not going to hear any background music, but um, I'm going to do some suggestions so you can play whatever you want. The um, Robert Belgrade, he's legit the act, the voice actor for Alucard. He has his own band. He's he's really big into music. The um, and it's mostly like instrumental stuff. So um, perfect for the background. Go check it out. There's a link in the description. The um, and yeah, pause the video, cue sun up, and um, let's go on a journey. So um, I don't speak for the the creator of the randomizer, Wild Mouse. He's fantastic. The um, thank you, Wild Mouse. You're you're amazing. The, um, but um, the general philosophy of the randomizer is it's looking to create a unique experience for the player, mainly by randomizing the, um, the relics that um, you'll find and in what order. So relics are progression item, or progression or forces, sources of progression that allow you to um, perform different actions of movement, transform to battle, all that good stuff. You've probably played the vanilla games, so you know all about it. So those locations are randomized, which forces you to um, traverse the castle in different ways. The, um, and it ensures that you can beat the game. If you've got uh, enough knowledge to beat the vanilla game, you can beat the randomizer. And um, it does that through using logic to, um, to place relics throughout the castle. The, um, and the other thing with logic is that it ensures that every relic can be obtained. So at no time will an item that's required to get to a location be that thing, right? Like it's not going to put mist behind a mist gate, for instance. So let's look at now what it doesn't do. So the randomizer objective really is to beat Dracula in the middle of the second castle by opening the, the gate to the shaft fight using all five um, relics of Vlad. That hasn't changed. It's, it's not beating Richter in the first castle. Don't do that. The... Um, so that's all the same. It doesn't change the game design around uh, rather than or except for things that can be reasonably randomized. And unfortunately, there are a couple limitations based on the game engine and the way they set it up. But um, otherwise, it's it's not a quality of life enhancement. But that isn't to say that there aren't quality of life enhancements around. So um, you may have noticed if you've been watching people stream the randomizer that if they um, press start, they get the, or sorry, select, they get the map, and it's got all these squares and stuff showing what relics are available, and they may have a relic tracker on the side. The um, That's part of um, the randomizer tools that Talek Zealot built. You can go to sodenite.io, it links to his GitHub. If you follow all of his instructions exactly, you'll be in a good place and you'll be able to figure it out. Otherwise, um, let's keep moving on. So we talked that relics are randomized, and the biggest thing is it randomizes them within the existing locations that you would find them in the game. So one of the first relics you find is the Cube of Zoe. You find that a couple of rooms after Death takes your stuff, because he's a jerk. The um, And so instead of finding Cube of Zoe, you're going to find someone else. And then you keep going to locations where you would have found relics normally in the vanilla game, and you'll probably get something else. The um, There are some presets where expand that, that do expand where relics can be found, and we're going to go over presets in another video and talk about that. But um, generally, it's just where, where relics can be found. The um, Some presets even take it a step further, and they take the progression items, so like holy glasses, things that you equip to you that you need to progress, and they randomize those as well. The um, So maybe you find Spike Breaker in like the second castle, for instance. The other big thing it does is it changes the locations that you'd find items, whether they're in pots or just laying on the ground, or from drops in enemies. The... Um, it even changes what's available in the library for you. So um, you could buy a Chrysogrim in the library, for instance. Uh, the next thing with you need to know about this is some presets will actually change the weapon stats and names. So if we're talking about Chrysogrim, it's a beast of a weapon. But maybe you'll find it in one seat and the stats are all messed up, the name's different, and it doesn't hit as hard. The, um, there's presets that do that, and we'll talk about those in, the, in some future videos here. Your starting equipment's different, so Alucard usually starts with his sword and a shield and dragon helm. Those are going to be different, but the types that you have will be the same, so you'll always have a one-handed weapon and a shield, for instance. You'll never start the game with a two-handed weapon. The Sometimes you'll start the game with some additional use items by doing certain things in the prologue, and those things are random. So it'll always be a use item, but maybe you'll start the game with an extra library card, which is super powerful. You are allowed to skip death, by um, by using that early, 
or maybe you've got a mana prism or a potion, all sorts of great stuff. The um, candle drops in the game are randomized based on like what would normally be dropped in candles, so like sub weapons, hearts, money, etc. The um, the only caveat is that you probably won't have the cube of Zoe right away. So if you start breaking candles and be like, "Well, this sucks. Why didn't I get anything?" It's probably just because you don't have the cube of Zoe. In it's it's just something that you're used to having um, normally when you play the vanilla game. There are two candles in the library though that um, they normally drop uncurses in the vanilla version. Those same candles will always drop a um, a use item, like which is randomized, so it won't be uncursed. But it could be library cards, mana prisms, TNT, all sorts of good stuff there. And when we're talking about um, candles and sub weapons, the axe knights that you find in the game normally drop a, the axe um, sub weapon, or at least have the chance to do so. In randomizer, they'll be assigned a random a sub weapon, and they may drop that instead, which could be a stopwatch or holy water, like very powerful things. Lastly, the cape colors randomize. Fashion souls, right? It's fun. Like I, I love that the cape colors randomize. It's so cool. The um, so there's a lot of things that aren't randomized. Some of it's based on just limitations of the game. But um, everything in the prologue prior to beating Dracula is the exact same thing. That includes the prerequisites for getting those use items we were talking about. It doesn't change the number of hearts, for instance. The um, where enemies are found and their stats remain the same. So you're never gonna walk into the laboratory and find like. I don't know, a Duron in there. It's always just going to be the skeletons that you know and love. And they're going to have the same stats, which is actually pretty good because the um, you're never going to be like stuck in the beginning of the game. Even if you don't have a weapon, Elucard's fists are very serviceable and his spells are fantastic. So um, at least you won't really get like hard stuck at the beginning. The um, the same requirements happen for Elucard. So your stats are not randomized by the randomizer itself and your level up requirements are still the same through experience. The thing is, is that Alucard actually um, has random stat growth. It's it's kind of a thing within the vanilla game as well. Although, like your stats will kind of like evenly grow over time, the um to an extent. But um, that's part of the vanilla game. That the randomizer is not doing that. The um, there's no room shuffle in this bad boy. So um, the castle layout will be the same, and that includes where teleporters send you. The um, it'll always be the same as it, as you knew from the vanilla game. The, um, the global health drop pool is also um, maintained, which is fantastic because you may need money to be able to buy a progression item in the library. So um, it's, it's good that you always have access to cash. The library prices will be the same as, as you experienced in the vanilla game. So there will be a $500,000 accessory if you have a clear file. And the item types are going to be the same. And let me explain this for a second. So when you go to the library and in the vanilla game, he's going to have two shields for sale. And one's going to be available for $400, and one's going to be available for just under $4,000. And that's going to be the same in the randomizer. Two shields for those prices, but the shields will be different. And it's the same for everything else. So you're always going to have the same amount of use items for sale, the same amount of armor, weapons, etc. They'll be in the same order that you would have normally found them. It's just what weapon you find or what use item you, uh, is in that slot will be randomized itself. So that's pretty much it, and that really should get you started. If um if you haven't started yet and um you haven't played around with the emulator, um ASD um who runs the randomizer and is fantastic at it, the um he has a, a great video that showcases how to set up um the emulator and set up um Talixel, it's, um rando tools. So that's gonna be in the description. Go check that out and um I hope you enjoyed the video. If there have been, are any mistakes, they'll be in the pinned comment. And um, if you notice any mistakes, let me know. I'll then pin them. And then um, everything relevant will be in the um, description. So this is the first of many. So I hope you're available for the trip. And um, yeah, we'll see you soon. Cheers.